Hello, Gentlemen Critics Nation. Welcome back. It's another exciting episode. I know you guys love when we get together and have these, these little meetings. And today, we're going to talk about Game of Thrones. Now, we're going to be doing a huge review starting, you know, from season one all the way up to the end of five. And just sort of, you know, in honor of season six, which is right around the corner. So if you're not caught up and you don't like spoilers, disengage now because there's <laughs> going to be a ton of them. Now, it's a little different this time because it's just me and Jesse. As we said in one of our previous videos, Alex is not caught up yet, but he's working on it. So hopefully he'll be able to join us in our Game of Thrones season in review that we're going to be doing, which we will actually have a video out Monday after Game of Thrones release. That'll be April 25th. So, but, but this, this is the video. This is what we're excited for. Me and oh, Jesse yeah. <laughs> love Game of Thrones. And, and I, I've been watching it since the beginning. I was there for season one. And I, I've sort of just, you know, I haven't really gone back and rewatched it more than like once. So for me, it's just sort of been a normal timeline progression. But Jesse just basically binge watched the entire series in about, what would you say, a month? Uh, it might have been a month, like three or four weeks, I would say. Okay, right off the bat, what? who's your favorite character? My favorite character? I don't... I could probably say right now, I know it's really fresh in my mind and it's eating at me right now, but Jon Snow might be becoming my favorite character. I mean, there's others. Tyrion... Daenerys, I love Daenerys. Arya Stark, really? I mean those those are just a few, but I think Jon Snow, and like I said, he is, his storyline with the Night's Watch has become to me personally one of the most boring storylines, to if not the best storyline in the entire show. And yeah, I so, totally and, agree. I think that uh, having watched Jon's progression, it's just an amazing character development. Because you feel in the first season, you sort of feel like John is capable of so much more. And it just, mm -hmm. and, and like you said, like by season two, you know, you don't really care all that much about the Night's Watch. It's, it's pretty oh, yeah. boring. And all of a sudden, right around three, especially going into four and especially five, all of a sudden you're just, John is, he's truly capturing this opportunity yeah. like we always thought he could. And hey. <laughs> I love it. I love his progression. I thought it was just so great to see. Yeah, and at this point, I don't, I, I can't, don't even know if I can say I'm a true Night's Watch fan or if I'm just a Jon Snow fan. I think at this point, seeing the last episode of season five, I think it's more just Jon and not <laughs> Night's Watch. I'm, I'm torn right now. I, I'm very torn. I always saw it. I, I sort of fell victim to the same thing that you're feeling, but I had a lot more time to think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've discovered that, honestly, it's, it's, it's entirely John. And I say it's entirely John because, honestly, some of the best John scenes are, well, he's pretending to be a wildling. Um, so You know so, nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, looking at John, you know, I'm thinking... I, I had, you know, this whole thing with the Night's Watch. I really loved them. I thought they were so cool. But, like, by the end of Season 5, you know, <sighs> through the Night's Watch. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it's all been all John. <laughs> it, it, it's all been John pretty much this entire time. And you were just like, oh, yeah, the Night's Watch are honorable and everything. And then, literally, they stab him in the back. Spoilers Full on. <laughs> this is uh, while watching that, and I said this to Kyle. That might be worse for me personally than the Red Wedding because I technically kind of knew in the back of my head who was gonna die at the Red Wedding, and at this point, loving John so much, I did not expect it. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? This show, Kyle, it doesn't <laughs> stop. This it show, stop. it pulls at your strings so much, and I can honestly say that I'm I'm sure there are better shows out there, but for me, personally, technically, this might be the best show I've ever seen, mm -hmm. if you technically look at it. 
I think it's, it's definitely got to be the best show on television right now. Easily. Yeah. I mean, Game of Thrones is it's it's absolutely I mean, HBO cannot cannot make it can can like we got Sopranos, The Wire, Game of Thrones, like HBO can they they hit they've always almost done it, every yeah. time. Yeah. And it's just they did it again with Game of Thrones. This is another generational TV show. People all over America are cannot wait for this Sunday. Oh, it's it's I, gonna be so huge, and yeah, it's it's so it's so exciting to see that because I remember when <laughs> my father actually before season one came out, my father uh, bought the very first book, A Tale of mm. Ice and Fire, and. He brought it home and we talked about it and he said he read like the first hundred pages, but it was so it was so vivid and it was so long. Oh yes. And yeah. he, he he sort of uh he grew a little tired of it. <laughs> but we heard that the Game of Thrones show was coming out and he had kind of been keeping me updated. So I so we kinda knew barely, you know, the basics going in. We knew it was called Westeros, you know, we knew so we heard this HBO was going to have the actual Game of Thrones show. So we were there from the premiere of episode one. That's fantastic. And just having seen the rise of Game of Thrones since then and the rise of George R. R. Martin's popularity, it's so huge. I love how we as a community, as Game of Thrones fans, have just – we've really rallied around this whole team, this whole production. Oh. It's, it's the show that we, you could, you've always hoped. That you're gonna get someday, you know? Yeah, this show has hit god status almost literally, and it's. I think HBO might have hit their peak with this show. Like, I don't know if they're going to get better. It HBO. I don't know if they're gonna do a better show after this. That's interesting that you say that because most people would say that The Wire is the greatest TV show ever. So that's yeah. so that's interesting that you think Game of Thrones. And I I honestly agree with you. I think that Game of Thrones is better. And I'm not going to give it the peak status yet because I don't think we've seen the best Game mm -hmm. of Thrones has to offer yet. Okay, yeah. Well, um, peak season, I meant a uh, peak series of an HBO show. But um, if, like, I mean, if any argument could be made for a peak season, it would be season four. But hopefully that, you know, season six is better than season five. I believe it will be. I think that... I mean, we all know that they broke up the last book into season five and six. So mm -hmm. season five was great, and it had a lot of huge moments, but it sort oh, of yeah. felt like, you know, it, it felt like there were so many more questions <laughs> and so many more things open and out in the air than you normally have at the end of a Game of Thrones season ending. Normally, when a Game of Thrones season ends, they end on a, on a solid Daenerys, and we feel very complete and ready to wait yeah. for this next season. But this time, they just ended us so abruptly. So, And, and to, to show us Daenerys getting kidnapped, to show us Cersei's shame and atonement, to show us Jaime's character development really reach a pivotal point, to watch Jon Snow get murdered by his own <clears throat> brothers of the Night's Watch and the boy he saved... I mean, it's just, they, it feels like he hit the middle of a book. And, and if that <laughs> yes. is how good the middle of the book is, I cannot I, even imagine how it's going to turn up. It could only get better from there. And yeah, fifth season, it ha it's had some bumpy roads. More, more, bumpy, more of a bumpy road than any of the other seasons, except maybe season two. Because season two, it felt like it was kind of hitting its... Uh, it, it wanted to hit its stride, but it was in its teenage years as a show, and that's, you know, that's why I've heard from other people. But season five, like, the first couple of seasons aren't a – are the look, they look like a strong start to a season. And then the middle of the season comes, and then arguably we get to one of the worst episodes ever, which I think Unbowed, Unbent, Unbroken is what it's called. It's just a terrible episode. Things feel forced. Ramsey, oh my god. Now, I want to talk that, that you bring up an interesting point. Now, I do I do want to talk about first, before I get to Ramsey, I do want to talk about uh, that scene in particular. Now, that was really controversial. I remember when that, that episode premiered and reading online that next following Monday, people were outraged. You know, we, 
we like you said in the teenage years of the show in the early years when they showed us rape oh, yeah. you know it was hard to watch but you know the only people who are watching the show were the kind of people who are ready to watch that you know yeah. they were prepared but now game of thrones has amassed such a wide and large population and they don't mm-hmm. even show as much uh they don't show as much you know nudity and yeah. profane language or anything like that. They're trying to adapt it to more, but at the same time, mm-hmm. this is HBO, and you need to know that they're going to show you stuff like this. And so, yeah. honestly, it was hard to watch, and I really hated it, but I think it was necessary because it reminded us all. It's the reason George wrote it into the book. You know, mm-hmm. It reminded us all what we're watching. This is Game of Thrones. This isn't some fluff show where everything's going to go right and Jon Snow's going to save the day. Sansa Stark's going to get raped while Theon watches and Jon's going to die. And so that it just sort of sets up the whole, you know, going into season six. This is the kind of show that's going to play with you, you know. They're going to they're gonna make you hate it and love it at the same time. I, yeah, I totally agree. Like the, like the first half of the show was just really gritty, like unnecessarily gritty. Mm-hmm. And now it seems like they kind of pick their moments I totally a agree. lot more now in the later seasons. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but the thing with Ramsey and also that what he did to Sansa on her wedding night, that also kind of, um, it made us hate Ramsey again because there was a little bit in between there, where, like, maybe Ramsey, I mean, we knew how bad he was, but he wasn't, like, he didn't hit God stat- status of terrible people like Joffrey <laughs> did in maybe the first season. Um, <laughs> but once he did that, we were all reminded that this guy is horrible and he needs to die. And that's one of the things I hope in season six that we see Ramsey Bolton dying. Well, one, we want Theon and Sansa to escape. We don't even know what happens to them. I have seen pictures. <laughs> I've seen set photos and they make it. Yes. They definitely both survive. I don't know how. It seems very <laughs> impossible. Bronn fell from a height that big and he became paralyzed. So I mean, yeah, I mean, granted, it was the snow. Yeah, so we yeah. don't know how fluffy that snow is there in Winterfell. So, but for a man with no <laughs> balls, Theon, uh, he has know, he, he no grew shame. a pair right there. No shame. <laughs> no, but I want to talk about Ramsey because I think Ramsey. I don't want to see him die. I want to see him make it quite far because I find his character fascinating. No. I really do. I think, and I've said this before, he reminds me of the Joker of Game of Thrones. You know, he he is sadistic, he is psychopathic. That's not the he, best person to aspire to be, though. But but I love that he's there. I love that he, he is a part of this universe, and we get to see so much of him. I love hating him, if that uh, makes sense. I, I didn't love hating Joffrey. I just hated okay. Joffrey. Okay. I, I couldn't wait. Till Joffrey choked on his pigeon pie. Okay, I, I, was, no I was waiting impatiently from the end of season. The moment Ned Stark's head was on a pike and he showed it to Sansa, I said oh. in that moment, "I want this guy to die," and and I just waited for him to die. But Ramsay, it doesn't matter all the crazy things that he does. It just makes me hate him so much more, and it makes me love hating him so much more. I. Just, yeah, this he's guy just is laughably so terrible. Crazy. What's yeah, he gonna that, do next? <laughs> I mean, the one season where, like, that—that's probably like, yeah. I loved that part when Ramsey pretty much comes out. He's got blood all over him, just ready to take on like five yes. guys. I'm just like, what? Like, this is this is funny and action packed all at the same time. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. and and plus, he's not just Ramsey Snow. He is Ramsey Bolton. Yeah, Ramsey Bolton. He is yeah. heir to the to the North. Okay, his father, illegitimately, is the warden of the North. Oh, uh, what a dude! What bullshit! <laughs> that is. God, this but but this this show it it doesn't stop. It goes up and it goes down. It pulls on your heartstrings every freaking time you watch an episode. And uh, uh, we I talked guess about the Red Wedding, and and I can see how. Going into it, if you already knew that it was going to happen, yeah, how it would dull the effect. But I, want to, I want to make a case for the red wedding here. I did not know that 
I knew there was a thing in Game of Thrones called the Red Wedding. I knew that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know that that episode was going to be that. I had okay. no reason to suspect that. I didn't know until all of a sudden the little ca- captioning said Reigns of Castamere and I was like isn't that the Lannister song? Yeah. And and as it started to play and I just it, I didn't know what was happening until all of a sudden, you know, Rob was lying there dead, cat <laughs> got her throat cut and yeah. he was just touching where his his child once was and i just it it killed me i loved rob so much so much so for for me like that was probably yeah. still is the hardest moment in game of thrones for me to watch but <clears throat> but i have to say john's death is easily second because i mean ned raised those boys right because i like all of them yeah all of them all the stark boys yeah, Rob Rob Stark is another example of a Ned Stark death. Death. It's somebody who dies before they truly hit God status, and that's what Rob did, and that's what Ned did. John, he has hit God status, and mm. and that's what's so crazy about it. He's hit the point, I think, with him, Tyrion, Daenerys, where you're just like, are they untouchable? And then we truly don't know right now. No, nope. we truly don't what, know. What George R. R. Martin says is. No one's untouchable. Oh, man. Dude, and that, we and could that's... at the imagine, imagine this. Now this is just purely hypothetical. Imagine at the end of season seven, when Daenerys dies. How do we react as fans? <laughs> And the season seven when did it I, oh my god, if that happens, I'm just like um who is, yeah, I mean, they've put, they've already done that multiple times where we're just like, how are we supposed to go on? Like, the North is dead. Everybody's mm-hmm. gone. And, uh, I mean, but truly, and that sucks that it's so uncertain, but that's that's why this show is amazing. But, it, but personally, it's hard, but I love it. And I, I don't So I want to quickly, I want to quickly talk about, let's go season by season. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Up to, so we'll start with season one, and we'll just sort of talk about some highlights, you know, some things that you, you want to talk about, and we'll just do that for season one, two, three, four, and five, and then we'll talk about what we're looking forward to in season six. 